How's it going variable traders, Robert H here. Today I'm going to talk about the mathematics behind day trading. I know a lot of people don't like math, but this is something you really have to understand. The probabilities, how to operate like a casino. And this relates to a topic that someone posted in our forums last week. They asked the question, how to learn to deal with losses, how to learn to be wrong. And this is something I struggled with early on in my career. Pretty sure some of the other moderators, Carlos, also mentioned that. Um, you know, how do you survive in this game if you're going to be wrong so often? And you know, obviously, no one likes to be wrong. No one, everyone likes to win. Everyone likes to be right. But you have to let that go. You have to check that in at the door when you become a day trader, because we are going to be wrong 30, 40, 50, 60 percent of the time, depending what your strategies are, what you, how you trade. The moment you learn to accept that fact, that each trade is either going to be a winner or a loser. There's no reason to get emotional over it. It's just one trade out of hundreds or thousands you're going to take in your career, right? The moment you accept that, all the emotions, they are going to dissolve. And the example I used to explain to that person was, okay, let's play a game. Let's play a game where I flip a coin. Each time you're right, you guess the outcome, right? Each time you're right, you get $2. When you're wrong, you pay me $1, right? 50-50. When you, and let's flip, say the first flip, you're wrong. Are you going to get upset over that? Are you going to get mad and frustrated and, and you know, bent on the, how the, that turned out? No, you're not. You're going to say, hurry up and flip the damn coin, Robert. These odds are in my favor. The probabilities are in my favor, right? So that, that's the way you view it. And that's how Mark Douglas really, he, he, he tried to explain that in the book. I think the videos on YouTube are much better at explaining it. It's a probabilities game. You got to think in probabilities and function in probabilities. That's the key. Anyone can think and, and uh, you know, run these numbers in, in the spreadsheet. But once you start trading with that mindset, then you're in the zone, right? You don't care about the individual trades. It's just one out of thousands. You just move on to the next trade. There's a setup, take it. There's a setup, good risk reward, take it. Manage your risk, that's what it comes down to. So that's a long rant. This is an example I put together um, that kind of quantifies this of letting your winners run and cutting your losers short. And based on how accurate you are, that's good. that that, that um, formula is gonna look a little bit different, right? So in, in the previous videos that I've been doing, I did, I've been talking about 1.5 to one, right? Your winners being 1.5, your losers being minus one. So in this example, easy math, one R is 100 bucks, your account's 10 grand, you're risking 1% of your account on each trade. This is after 100 trades, what the results are. So first, let's just run through one of these. 40% win rate. If your profit factor, your profit factor is basically your realized risk reward, is 1.75 to one, right? So 1.75 for your winners and one for your, uh, your losers. You're right 40 times, you're wrong 60 times. Now your winners is 40 times 175, right? Because that's what you're risking is 100 bucks. That's seven grand. Your losers is 60 times 100 bucks is six grand. After 100 trades, you are going to be up $1,000, which is 10%, right? This is obviously before commissions. So you see how that, that's 10%. That, that's not bad for being wrong half, more than half the time. Let's move, let's step it up here. Next example. Say your profit factor is two, right? Two to one. Your winners are 200 on average and your losers are 100 on average. It doesn't have to be that way. You know, people cut their losers short. Maybe you may, you may come up with a long aver long term average of $75 and then your winners don't have to be 200. They can be 150, right? This is what I'm saying. Cut your losers short. Get this number down as low as possible for your negative R's and let your winners run, right? That's what all the pros say. And this is how you quantify that. Let this number become as long as big as possible uh, based on how the price action and uh, the trade is working out. So anyways, back to this example, right? Two to one, 40 winners. 60 losers. Your winners is 200 times uh, 200 times uh, 20 or 40. It was 8,000. Your losers are 6,000. The difference is two grand. You just returned 20% to your account after 100 trades, right? On the 10k account. Now let's get further down here. Look at the 70% accuracy. Your winners can be smaller than your losers, and you're still profitable, right? Look at this. Let's just do this last example. 70%. Your winners only have to be $70 and your losers can be $100 and you're still going to return 20%. Isn't that crazy? So once you accept these numbers, right, don't get caught up in the day to day and the trade per trade gyrations and the emotions and all this stuff. Just take a trade for what it is, right? We are the house. Our goal is to keep the doors open for as long as possible because the probabilities are in our favor, right? The moment you start, getting emotional and losing more than one R per trade, that's like a, a, a you're at a blackjack table, the max bet's a hundred bucks, and then the dealer's paying out two, three hundred dollars on the losses. The, the casino would never let that happen. You get fired right away, right? So treat it like that, guys. Fix the R, 
Don't lose more than one R in a trade. It's okay to lose less, right? Cut them short. Let your winners run. Okay, that's a very long, very long rant. Let's get to my trade today. I only took two trades today. NVIDIA um, wasn't on my watch list for some reason. It was expensive. I thought it was like $200, $300 still, but when I pulled it up, it was only $135. Uh, nothing really to write home about here. I missed the orb because I didn't have it on watch. That was a nice two-minute orb. Big flush. Consolidated. People in the room started uh, taking it long here. Norm, Dima, Alan, William, some other folks. So that's pretty good uh, VWAP reversal type setup, right? New five and a high. Couldn't make any lows. A new low there. And uh, I, I got a little bit of FOMO, but I was like, you know, that's not my play. I like to take my reversals after 10.30, the extreme reversals. So I'm just going to sit it out, wait for some sort of pullback. As soon as we established this uh, very bullish candle, I said, okay, we're going to form an uptrend, I think now, right? Wait for a pullback, took it right off the VWAP bounce, got a great entry, scaled out after two to one there, a little bit more here, a little bit more high of the day. And then I got up to uh, 140 and change, which was this moving average. Got $5 a share on that last partial, which is uh, pretty good. And then I started um, kind of getting a little bit of FOMO for some reason. I, I'm, you know, I was part of the first bull flag. That's great. The second bull flag was still good. The third was still good. I was thinking to myself, I should be adding on these uh, consolidations, these pullbacks, because this move is very, very strong and very intact. But uh, I didn't. And then I sudden, all of a sudden, I started getting FOMO here. I, I, I saw this pullback to the moving average on the five, and I took it long, put my stop down here, and I had a dollar move. And then I told myself, okay, this is a, a risk-free trade because I got in on a momentum pop, a breakout that comes back to my break even. I'm bailing, but I should probably bail after a new two-minute low. And when it hit that point, it made the new two-minute low, it flushed so fast. Very, very fast, made a new five-minute low, and I froze. I froze like a deer in the headlights. Um, I, I was still in good shape because my original stop is here, right? This is my minus one R. But the chart was telling me this thing's falling apart, right? The 15-minute chart is probably going to break here. And um, I got, you know, I started changing my mind. It's like, okay, I'll just wait till the original stop. Another part of me said to get out at break even. Kind of just uh, really indecisive. And that, that, that was a big mistake. I got to let the emotions uh, get to me a bit here because the moment you start changing your mind in the middle of a trade, that's a, that's a sign that something's gone wrong. You are now into your stress. The stress is, is, is um, overriding the logic, right? Because we are supposed to plan the trade and trade the plan. My plan was to get out at break even or a new two minute low. Next thing you know, I'm underwater. And uh, fortunately for me, I pulled back and I just got out on this pullback. As you can see, I had to survive this huge, huge uh, wick here before it came back, went like this. And good thing I bailed there because this thing was obviously falling apart, the reversal. I would have taken this as a, a Robert reversal had I not been so long biased. This is a moving average cross, um, triple top of some sort, right? Clearly a reversal in retrospect. So lucky to have uh, gotten out of there. That was pretty small. I think it was minus 0.3 R or whatever. This winner, I still haven't even looked at my PNL. I'm, I'm guessing this is probably a two, maybe a three R, who knows. But um, that, this funny thing is this trade was actually paid off by this last partial uh, in terms of R's. So letting your winners run, cutting your losers short. And uh, that's been today's video. Thanks for watching.